Welcome, Joslyn Center Facebook uh, fans and our new podcast fans. My name is Jack Newby. I'm the executive director here at the Joslyn Center. Um, want to welcome you, encourage you to come to the Joslyn Center. We now have uh, 61 in-person programs, and we're also continuing with virtual programs uh, like this one. Uh, if you would like to sign up for virtual programs, check out our website at jocelyncenter.org. Um, and under virtual programs, we just ask you to submit your email address and you'll get a schedule every month of, of what programs are being offered um, if you're not able to come in. So, um, and we just, with this new variant, just want to remind people that uh, here at the Jocelyn Center, we require temperature checks, sign in and mask wearing um, at all times while in the building. So uh, we look forward to seeing you. And again, you can check out um, all of our programs and services on jocelyncenter.org. Um, and also check out our wellness center programs, uh, brain boot camp, um, problem solving strategies, and the aging mastery program. Uh, we have an in person and Zoom brain boot camp uh, starting next week. So if you're interested in that, um, sign up for it. It's a two session course. Uh, and really gives you a lot of information about memory care, uh, brain health, uh, and how to uh, improve your memory uh, and remember names and places and those sorts of things. So uh, it's a fun class. It's uh, developed by UCLA Longevity Center, um, and we are the only place in the Coachella Valley that can present it. So I want to go forward now with our um, interview today. Uh, we're talking with Richard Katz. Of, um, sorry. <laughs> um, we're talking with Richard Katz of Canine Ambassadors, and he's going to let us know about um, therapy dogs and the difference between therapy dogs and the guide dog you see. Um, so, welcome, Richard. How are you? Thank you. Well, I'm really good. Happy New Year to you and everybody, and thank you so much for having me here. Thank you. Happy New Year to you. So, tell us a little bit about yourself um, and what brought you into. Um, canine ambassadors and, and uh, letting people learn and know about therapy dogs? Well, every story is different and everybody has a different way of taking their pet to become a therapy dog, but I'll briefly, you know, I'll tell you mine. So uh, prior to retirement, I had a human resource career, uh, you know, going to universities and uh, corporate HR and uh, management consulting and so on. So totally unrelated to, 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 you know, dogs. And um, the way I got started is that I retired in 2014 and I uh, was retained by UCLA Health uh, to um, help them raise money for their uh, therapy dog pro program. And um, so in the process of raising money, I got involved in seeing what people did with therapy dogs, which led me to come home and say, hey, you know, of my three dogs, which one of you are gonna be the lucky one? And I picked one of them. And at that point, um, I took uh, uh, Rudy to some um, uh, very inexpensive uh, uh, entry level, um, a basic command kind of education. Uh, they're offered at Petco, PetSmart, uh, community colleges, but it's worth, it's usually about $150. And uh, anyway, so um, uh, I trained them and then I uh, became a handler at uh, uh, UCLA and for a couple of years uh, made, made the rounds. And uh, then I, um, was asked so many times, you know, how'd you get into it? Uh, you, uh, you know, how do you do it? What's the qualifications? So I created a class that is taught um, uh, now uh, on Zoom that provides uh, people with uh, information about how to certify your pet. Um, so what's, so what's the difference? You know, we you're talking about therapy dogs um, and there are also, you know, we, we see guide dogs that, that um, people with low vision or who are blind have, um, yes. and also companion dogs. So what's, yeah, what's yeah. the difference between those three? 
Yeah, well, the people get confused. Everybody does. I'd say 90% of, of the public really gets those terms mixed up. Simply stated, a service dog is your dog that has been trained to help you overcome some kind of a disability. And that can be anything from sight to, mo to mobility to detection of blood and so on. That's a service dog. A therapy dog is simply a dog that doesn't have quite that high level of uh, training, but is taught basically to like people. It's basically uh, taught to uh, know the basic commands, such as sit still and so on, uh, and to be able to be in well, well controlled. And I have some more comments about that. So that's the difference between a therapy dog and a service dog. Therapy dogs are to, are to help other people to, to, uh, to reach out into the community, whether it be hospitals or airports and so on, and to be able to provide that stress, stress, stress reduction. So that's the difference, Jack. So part of your, part of your journey, as you've explained it, um, led to you uh, forming a nonprofit organization to help people uh, learn how to train their therapy dogs um, and how they can uh, get out into the community with those dogs. So tell us a little bit about the, the sure. Canine Ambassadors. Yeah, okay. Well, Canine Ambassadors is a new nonprofit that I established. It is right now... Um, um, after COVID, we lost two years, uh, you know, COVID stopped the therapy dog field. So during that time, I've been testing the concept of what canine ambassadors should, should be. So it's still a moving target, um, but it's sort of a research platform for me to figure out what is the niche within the Coachella Valley, but probably on a national basis as to where I can you know, fit in with my services, having an entrepreneurial background, a business background and so on. So um, I uh, think I've got a model down um, and um, that's, but it's too early yet. But in terms of what we're doing right now, um, I would encourage the audience to send me an email um, if you have any interest in thinking that your dog, your pet could become a, a therapy dog, and I'll be glad to help you. Uh, so you mentioned sending an email. So how can people um, contact you? There's K9, that's K, the oh, K9 well, ambassador.org. Well, and yeah, what's your email or other contact information? Yeah, yeah. I, I would use for now, I would use cats are. K A T Z R at, and it's four letters, H R M S dot net. Um, that's more reliable at this point. Okay. Plus, it goes, plus, it goes to me. And since this is being developed, um, I want to be involved in what your needs are. So, if someone's interested and, and they've gone through the process of, of the training for a therapy dog, what are what is a therapy dog team? Yeah, well, okay, good. So a, th a therapy dog team is made up of you and your dog. Your dog, your dog is your pet. It's not somebody else's dog. It's your full-time dog. It could have been a dog that you've had for several years, like I had. It could be a new puppy and so on. So, so the team is made up of you, the handler, and the therapy dog. Um, uh, which, uh, you know, we can go into more detail about what's required depending upon time. So what is, what is what you mentioned the requirements to become a, um, a therapy dog team? Um, and so what are some of the requirements that uh, people should look at oh, if interested in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Um, basically it's two things. It's the requirements for the dog and the requirements for the handler. That's, you know, you for the dog, it, 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 basically, 
quickly, and I'm just, these are concepts, but to summarize it, um, the, the therapy dog has to be mellow, has to show no aggression, has to like people, <laughs> has to like all people or almost all people. So it's more of a temperament. The actual skills involved are really quite minimal. They're basically the seven basic commands, sit, stay, fetch, you know, that kind of thing down, um, which are fairly easy to teach uh, through uh, 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 resources. Um, so um, those are the basic requirements for the dog. And for the handler, you, um, I have a kind of a summary. I'll try to go quickly over that. Um, you have to own your own dog. You have to be able to travel to uh, different facilities. Uh, you need to know how to talk to uh, strangers because you're taking your dog out into the community and making people happy. Um, your dog has to love everyone, almost everyone. You know, only a few people my dog has rejected, but that's rare. Um, your, your dog is well trained and knows the basic commands and uh, you can control the, the dog. So it may or may not be for everyone, but there's a lot of benefits for becoming a therapy dog uh, handler, which I can summarize if you'd like, uh, Jack. Yeah, what are some of those benefits? Okay, so specifically, as I see it as, a, as an aging senior, <laughs> um, these are benefits from my, from my perception, um, but I think, they're, I think they're universal. For you, um, is that if you have a compassionate personality and you have an empathetic one, and you actually feel that you that it makes uh, that it, that it's a that it's a you know uh, there's a term for it, but it, 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 there's a special high level of service uh, to make people happy. And in therapy dog handling, I don't have to do anything. I just bring the dog to the event, and the dog does all the work, and I can be in my uh, you know not perfect personality. Um, you need, you, 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 uh, get to meet new, new people. Um, so if you want to build a community, I'm, you know, new to the desert and, um, been here for about three years, haven't found it too easy to make any real decent, uh, relationships, friends. Um, all my friends are outside, you know, back in LA and so on. So, um, this is a way to, you know, meet, meet, meet new people. Um, obviously, you're going to maintain a more active lifestyle, which obviously is good for the health. And I personally think it's um, it, it helps me reduce all my guilt <laughs> in other areas of my life. So, so when people go through this training and they, they have a therapy doc, and as I understand, they're, through the training, there is there are organizations that certify individuals at, as a therapy yeah, doctor. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let me explain that real. It's okay. It's a convoluted world of therapy dog animals out there. There's all kinds of nonprofit agencies, some big, some small, uh, some by area, some by breed. So there's an infrastructure. I'm going to guess about 100,000 therapy dog handlers, uh, but they're not connected except through these uh, national verse and uh, uh, regional agencies, um, and they set up their they they try to follow the same set of rules about training and and evaluation. They try, but it's loose. So, um, if you really are interested, um, send me an email, and I will forward to you the agency that I think best fits your particular you know uh, needs. Okay, why don't you let, let people know that contact information again? The yeah, sure. It's okay. So uh, the email is cats, R K A T Z K A T Z 
R as in Roger at and then four letters H R M S dot net. Henry so, Roger Sugar dot net. So if someone goes through that training and is certified, what are what are some of the places where they would be able to bring their dog? Oh yeah. Uh -huh. as uh -huh. Yeah. Dog? Well, um historically they've been hospitals and 95 percent of the hospitals now have a therapy dog program according to the whatever and um one uh one can really now start going to a variety of places and facilities that um have a a, a common source of stress okay and i figure that uh, and 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 that can be anything from courtrooms to airports um maybe uh, employer work sites um and you know how many areas don't have stress right so I guess in, 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 in a nutshell, a canine ambassador's purpose is to um, expand the use of therapy dogs, period. 